So what are the reasons why would you want to grow plants in a bucket? Well, uh, the system that I'm using is kind of a mix between aeroponic and hydroponic. It's a low pressure um, system that sprays liquid, a solution, on to the plants. Well, the plants, the roots, how does it work? Well, um, you see that there, that solution that's, uh, that's got a lot of uh, different solution with it, with water. The pump sprays up here on these plants and these plants, the roots come out and though they're exposed to the air and the oxygen, it allows them to pull that in. Um, it also helps that they can, um, when this sprays up, it sprays the roots. The roots absorb the nutrients, the water, all that good stuff, and it helps them grow. Um, they grow usually a lot faster and they grow, you can control the, um, you know, a lot of the environment uh, variables that we have in here. So these are indoors. These are in a garage that stays mostly warm most of the time. And as you can see, they've kind of taken to that. Um, you can grow lots of different things in here. You can grow beans, you can grow sweet potatoes, you can grow peppers, you can grow squash. You can grow uh, any kind of green that you can think of. This is a mustard green. You see that deep green color? Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, beans, these are black beans. So I just did that because my wife didn't think I could grow it. So um, I put two beans in there and now we have like oodles of beans. Um, lots of things you can grow in here. Um, here we also have, I believe that might be kale, I think, I can't remember, it's been a while. Um, those are some mustard greens that are kind of on the last leg, so I need to plant some more. Um, these are cucumbers here. They don't do that great, so I'm not sure if I'll continue to grow on those. And then as for squash, this is the, um, I don't know, Japanese pumpkin, but I think it's growing fast. So, yeah, so it's uh, an interesting way to grow things. It's fun. Um, it's contained, so each one of these, if it has a problem with the water or a disease, it's going to be contained to that bucket. So I'm not going to lose the entire thing just off of one issue. So that's why I do this. It's fun. They're easy to clean up. They're easy to handle. Um, they're isolated, and um, they're easy to move around. So hope you enjoy it. So the parts you're going to need, of course, at the bucket, you have a water pump. You have the top, you have uh, this neoprene little thing. I think this is two inches. Um, also, I use three inch net pots and then of course three inch uh, stoppers to put those in there. Um, now, um, what you can do is if you uh, don't want a three, I, I have this thing as 3D printed and it's just a um, simple uh, thing. And this goes on together like that. The little piece just snaps into here, stays there, and then this has the water that comes up and then it will spray out and it's gonna spray those roots. So the only thing you really need to do is once you get those, you're also going to need a timer. That's going to tell it when to do the spraying, which I do um, for about a minute, every 45 minutes. So you need some sort of sprayer uh, timer like that to tell you when to tell these things when to spray. Because the the thing that, that works with these is that um, this really works. As you see how these roots are coming through, they're hanging out in the air. They get oxygen, which allows them to build cells, um, and they get sprayed every now and then, um, every 45 minutes for about a minute. And so when it sprays up, it uh, the roots will then get wet, absorb the nutrients and the water, and then they grow. <clears throat> and so that's how, once the roots start to pull down through that, um, uh, through that rock wool, then the plants really start to take off. So putting this together is really simple. Um, once you have the 3D printed uh, sprayer on the top here, all you do is just put it down and it will stay on there. And um, all we have to do now is just cut the holes in 
the top and put it all together, which takes, all this takes maybe like 30 minutes tops. All right, so I used this as a guide because this is going to sit here. And so what happens when I cut these out, these will just fit right in it. Um, this is basically going to be where the plug comes out, right? So we have this that needs to come out and plug into the power. And this hole needs to be um, a little bit smaller than this. Um, so it can actually fit into there. So I've rudimentary, <laughs> I've rudely kind of colored it out. So now I'm just going to cut it out. I'm going to use this box cutter to do it. And I'm just going to kind of cut and cut it at an angle and um, cut around here. Okay, so you can see here I have uh, done my um, worst at cutting and I've cut all these holes. And this one is, of course, uh, smaller than that than this because it's going to be kind of wedged in here. Now what you'll also want to do is you can cut around this because this is going to kind of fit in here and that will give it a way to kind of wedge in there. And then if you happen to move things around, it'll be kind of set and steady um, and won't move around as much. So you don't have to worry about this like falling in there and um, this coming loose. So, well, let's, um, it's ready. So let's uh, put this thing together and um, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you see this is in here. Um, add a little bit of water so I can get some suction so it would actually just stick. Uh, this is now in here. Um, this has been, I threaded, uh, threaded this through and hooked this in. And you can see it is kind of stuck in here, not going anywhere, which is great. And now we add our, we'll add our net pots and these kind of just jam in here like that. And those have a nice tight fit. So you don't have to worry about make sure that this is in low enough that the water is not going to come out. So that's one thing you have to worry about is that um, this is going to spray up. And if there are holes here, it's going to spray out. And I mean, you'll get some of that regardless. So, I mean, that's just, um, you just do your best to keep it sprayed up. And so now it's pretty much all it is is ready for is ready for plants and uh, the solution. So what I do is I use this type of solution down here. It's a general hydroponics. Uh, let me turn these around so you can actually see that. Um, you use a mixture based on their recommendations. However, I do tend to um, put about um, close to 100 milliliters of the solution in there. Um, I was only putting just a little bit per like what two and a half gallons because the water is only going to come up to about here. That didn't really do it. So I, I damped up the nutrition. Um, I have better looking plants now. These peppers, really good. These look great. Um, you know, the, this thing just took off and all the other plants are really, really doing well with that added nutrition. So. One thing you're gonna get is, of course, some of this. This is the potassium ash. Um, that's normal. You can use saran wrap to help uh, keep this from getting um, getting out, getting wet, protecting it from insects, um, especially like uh, some of bugs that like to uh, like wet water. So anyway, so if you got any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, hope you enjoy this, and I hope you are successful in your garden. Take care.